That's so weird. weird. I did a I consultation did a today, right? The guy was in Jacksonville, Jacksonville North, Carolina, North Carolina, ready to buy a, 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 mobile, a mobile home mobile park. park. And I'm like, and I'm I got like, Stephanie, Stephanie come on today. It's crazy. crazy. <laughs> Um, what he was looking at buying a park or yeah i'm gonna ask you some questions while we're here too yeah go for it we'll do that so class class, class. greetings class class. good to see you you. i am chris haskin and we'll be your co-pilot for today today. i'm hanging out with my friend friend, stephanie mcgannis long time no talk to long time no speak to i'm so excited I have missed talking, <laughs> talking to you. I'm glad you're your family is good. good. Everybody, Everybody goes to your family to your family's family's family thing. Thank God. Sorry, I'm, guys. I'm, I'm, I I'm, dropped off, but I'm back. Yeah, we made With it. Vengeance. Made it. Made it. I'm happy I'm about, happy that. about so, that. So Stephanie is Stephanie a master. Is a master. She's a master. She's broker, investor, investor, mobile home mobile flipper, home flipper parking, parking, uh, mobile home park owner, manager, mom, and all that stuff. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So tell us, so give us a little bit of background about you and what you do on a daily, daily, daily basis real quick. All right. So I got started in the mobile home business back in um, 2007, um, strictly by accident. Um, I was doing short sales is how I got into the real estate um, industry um, mm-hmm. back during the time when, you know, um, banks were taking homes for any reason whatsoever, just because of those adjustable rate mortgages. But um, my mentor at the time was um, investigating mobile homes. Mm -hmm. And he took a course on mobile home park investing and reached out to me and said, hey, Steph, I think it's a good idea for you to pivot and to look into this. It's pretty good money-making opportunity, um, large returns on your investments. So basically, you know, you could get 20%, 30% or more of a return on your investment. So I took him up on it, um, did some research on it, jumped in, um, basically jumped into the fire because I had no clue what I was doing and ended up getting an opportunity from a park that was going out of business. And um, they told me I could take as many mobile homes as I wanted. What? Um, what? Because they were they were getting rid of the homes. Um Sounds like a good thing, but like I said, it was baptism by fire, so I had no clue what to do even with one home, let alone as many as I wanted to take. Mm -hmm. And just like, you know, we're saying how to start without a large budget. I did not have any money to, or thousands of dollars, I should say, to go out here and start investing. Mm -hmm. So I was able to get started with um, Mm -hmm. $3,000. I got the homes for free, and I'll tell you where the $3,000 comes in at. But tax season is coming, and this is one of the things that I'm telling a lot of people to do. Leverage your tax return. Don't go out and use it for you know stuff that's not going to make you money. Let's use it to make money. And that's what I did with this opportunity when it came. So I used the money for my tax returns, which was about $3,000. was able to move those homes, found a park, moved those into, and paid for the moving costs. And that was my three thousand dollars. Set them up where I needed to set them up, and guess what? Started um, doing rent to own on all yes, three of them. Yes, yes, Got yes. fifteen hundred dollars down. Now this is back in two thousand ten. So now of course you would get more, but I've got fifteen hundred dollars down for each home. So automatically make my three thousand dollars back and more, because that was just a down payment. And then I rented them out for about um, six hundred dollars a month. Lot rent was only two fifty, so I was making money every month, and that's how I got started. And with my tax returns, <laughs> look at that stuff. So, nice. Your best. Yeah, yeah, and it's been a journey ever since. So you know, I started doing it with um, investing, and then got into brokerage. Um, got an opportunity to join uh, a large brokerage firm. And that, again, was by accident. I have to say I'm truly blessed um, by accident and um, really just went in to consult with someone who was a little disorganized with their processes and business processes. And it came in and started working with them on their business processes. And Mm -hmm. while I was meeting with the heads of this uh, real estate firm, they liked my ideas. They were very interested in the 
what I knew about mobile homes and I guess my just creative way of thinking and mm -hmm. asked me if I would like to become a broker. I let them know what, at that what? time. I didn't think I could be a broker at their firm because they had all these strict rules and, you know, Ivy League and all this kind of stuff. And they said, nope, we'll make an exception if you're willing to, to join our to join the company because we have no one doing mobile homes. And well, we have one person doing mobile home parks, but we like to, you know, add you on. So I did. I, I joined the firm with a lot of uh, hesitation and pushing from my mentor. Um, and ended up joining the firm and became one of the top brokers for mobile home parks in, I guess, in the United States, because I was getting people from all over the place. I was even getting people from China calling me back then, um, <laughs> wanting to invest in mobile home parks. Um, I was able to broker uh, probably, I don't know, maybe hundreds of millions or dollars in mobile home parks. Um, was able to flip those. And then I got the opportunity to become a property manager. Same thing, very blessed. Had one of my clients who, he didn't buy a park for me, but he was about to buy a park. And he came to me and said, look, I have a couple of million dollars on the line and the lender won't let me um, buy this park because we have no experience. So we need someone with experience that can come in and manage for us. I had no experience as a property manager, but I had experience managing my own properties. And mm -hmm. they actually flew the lender here to North Carolina from, I think, Michigan somewhere to meet me uh, to uh, prove that I knew about mobile homes. I guess I passed the, the list, you know, the checklist and ended up managing and they ended up buying the park. And what was interesting is she had just inherited a mobile home park. So she was asking me a lot of personal questions and took my number and we kept in touch. And that's basically how I got started. Just a lot of coincidence, a lot of blessings. And it's a space that I truly love. I love every aspect of mobile home investing. Every aspect. Okay. Okay. One second. One second. I hear I hear echoes 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 one second. Yeah. Might be my Might be microphone. My microphone. <laughs> Shoot. I wanted to use my new mic, but I might not be able to. People Let's see if that helps. I took the echo off when um on the Let me know if anybody. What did you say, Steph? I went into settings and, and changed it. So you can oh, change yeah, it. All right, y'all let me it's know if y'all can still hear this. We gotta get this rolling. Is it one, two? Still got an echo? Still echo, still echo. Oh no, Jackie. All right, y'all let me know, please. Is there an echo still there? Stephanie says she did her this um, space conjunction modulator and no more echo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where you are, where you're from, so I know who's here with us today. Stephanie, you're in North Carolina. I think. Yes, I am. Stephanie. I'm in the Charlotte area of North Carolina. Yes, so this can be done. Steph, for people that want to get involved with mobile homes, who is what is who is this ideally for? I'm gonna be honest with you, it's ideally for it's ideal for anyone. You can be a new investor like I was with no experience, uh -huh. not a clue what I was doing. You can get started in this. You can get started in this if you are an experienced investor, such as yourself, Chris, that does you know, single family houses, multiple, you know, um, apartments. Mm -hmm. If you were into um, other type of retail space, you can get into mobile home investing and mobile home park investing. The great thing about this is that, like we said, you can start without a large budget. You literally can start with zero dollars if you want to. <laughs> zero dollars. And I can mm -hmm. show you how to get started with zero dollars. I just did it. I just got two mobile homes for zero dollars and I made twelve thousand dollars from actually eleven thousand dollars from those from those zero dollar mobile homes that I was able to acquire. And what I know you you're do? gonna say, Well, you know what you're doing. <laughs> no, I mean I do know what I'm doing, but I can show you how to do it as well for zero dollars. We're gonna get to those case studies, Stephanie, if you don't mind showing <laughs> some pictures in a minute, but Oh, yeah. I had a friend of mine ask me last. In fact, I had Damon mm -hmm. Dash. Too. Damon Dash was in my house yesterday. He asked oh, me about. Cool. Yeah, dude. I mean, he was in my house. <laughs> um, I did an interview with him. So nice. 
I show you a picture. Why you get your pictures? I'll put my pictures up. I'll show you. Oh, <laughs> right. I'm geeking. But he was asking me about these smaller houses because obviously he's from an extravagant background. Mm -hmm. and he's curious about his investing and stuff. He's like, man, I want to get into smaller houses and stuff. So I want to ask you affordable housing. I just feel like that is just in such a demand right now. Yes. Crazy. Coast yeah. to coast. So do mobile homes fall into that category? Yes, they do. Um, the thing is, is that they are pretty much um, – resistant to these ups and downs of the, the you know rent payments being so large um and people not being able to afford a place to live mm -hmm. i mean if you think about it there's there's so many aspects to mobile homes and mobile home investing there's and i i see some people making comments about it there's investing where with mobile homes where you don't own the homes at all you just own the land underneath the home there's rent to own options. So if you don't want to be a landlord forever or you don't want to be a landlord doing, you know, toilets and things like that, you can invest in mobile homes and have that That's angle. Me. That's me. Yeah. You can have another angle, which is like I just said, you can start with zero money, zero money and be able to invest in mobile homes and make money. So there, there's just so many different aspects to it. Um, but it, it definitely is, uh, you know, great for low income housing and good low income housing, not slum <laughs> low income housing. You know, and I then, think a lot of people. That think down. Of what do you mean by that? Well, you know, a lot. Some people see mobile homes and they think, oh, well, there's drugs and crime, and and you know, and the lowest of the low live there because they don't have any other options. That is not true. There are mobile homes that are beautiful, beautiful inside and out. Um, mobile home parks that may look rough when you drive through it because the homes are older. Mm -hmm. But those homes are very well taken care of. They get rehabbed. The rehab cost is a lot cheaper than single family houses because less square footage. Mm. And the materials used in the homes are not as expensive. Because they're, we're not talking granite countertops and things like that, mm -hmm. you know. So it, it's just a great aspect to get into for any type of investor, from new yeah. to to very experienced. Both of our mentors, Lonnie Scruggs, R.I.P., wrote a yep. book, and you've got the book. And I have visited this young lady. I've been to her location. I've been to park to her park. We've been to other parks. I've walked through houses. Uh, mobile homes with her she is the real deal y'all and she's going to show some stuff she's doing now I, I guess my whole thing is when i think about rents i'm here to tell you stuff my rents went from 900 dollars in 2019 to 14 15 1600 dollars in 2023 yeah. stephanie it's just unbelievable yeah. and and uh, i i feel like it's just not sustainable. And that's why I wanted to bring you on because i'm like it's, there is no way this country because i know people ain't making that much more money yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, is that I was just talking, I had this conversation with my son, actually, and we we're just talking about people that are making minimum wage, even though they increase minimum wage or people that are making 12, 13, 14, 15 dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, you know, mom, how can people make a living? Like, how can they make a living, have a place to live, have a car, have a life? Mm -hmm. Let alone have children on top of it. <laughs> Something. You know, and I was like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, mobile homes are really needed because, like I said, I have mobile home, I manage mobile home parks, but there's mobile homes where people pay from $600 a month all the way up to $1,400 a month. Wow. And you, that's a huge range. And you might be like, well, wait a minute. How can someone pay $600 and somebody pay $1,400? Well, the 600 are those people that may actually have people that pay 500. Um, those are people that own their own home, but they don't own the lot, the land that the home is on. So that's lot called rent. lot rent. Lot rent. Then Got we it. have those that are like up to $1,400. Why? Because they're in a large municipal area, like near the Raleigh area. Mm -hmm. um, they are three bedrooms, two bathrooms, um, energy efficient, 
uh, appliances and Nest mm -hmm. thermostats and you name, I mean, laundry room built in, all kinds of extras. So yeah, people are paying that money. But like I said, I have nine fifty, seven fifty, six fifty. You know, they can run wow. the gamut. They can run the gamut. That's what I'm telling you, man. When I when I when I finally got the realization, I think it was 2009. Affordable housing ain't going nowhere. I mean, because no. I because I do a lot of Section Eight, and mm -hmm. I do every too. time I oh what uh -huh. <laughs> you do you do Section Eight in the mobile. Oh, yeah. home? See what okay. did I just say? What did I just say? The great thing about mobile home investing is that what? you are not limited to anything. So you know how in Section 8, those people can use their voucher to either rent or buy a home? They mm -hmm. can use it to buy a mobile home as well. Get out of here. Uh-huh. Um, I, I did see oh. people. I just want to break down a little bit of mobile home versus trailer versus manufactured home real quick. So Okay. Hold on. Let me reintroduce you. If you're just joining us, we got Stephanie McAnnis. <laughs> A mobile home investor, <laughs> owner, broker, and just uh, a mobile home expert. And we're going to have some goodies for you in a few minutes. So make sure you stay tuned. She's opening up her training for just for you guys, nobody else, right? So this is make sure you stay tuned for a few more moments so he, so she can explain. I'm sorry, Steph. So, all right, here, here we go. Get back to it. No, you're good. You're good. So, Get your questions in too, y'all. Yeah, a lot of people don't know the difference between manufactured home, mobile home, trailer, RV, you know, um, a mobile home can be a double wide or a single wide. They are okay. made in a factory, but they're completely made in the factory. So just like a tiny home, just like a shed, they're completely made. They they have the um, the foundation um, and then they go from the foundation up and they make the walls and everything, close it in. Everything is fully ready to go. And they're able to take that mobile home and the reason why they call it mobile is because you literally can pick it up with a truck got it hopefully hopefully you're going to use a you know a approved moving mobile home moving truck but i've seen people pull it off with a dually what they can pull it yes you can pull it with a dually don't do that but that is a no. mobile home now a manufactured home can also be interchanged with mobile home but then you have those that are where they make the walls in the factory, the roof, the, you know, the, the trusses and all that stuff. And then they bring the parts to the land and then they start putting it together there. Okay. That's more yeah. of a manufactured type home, but a yeah. mobile home can be interchanged with mobile home trailer. Some people do call them manufactured homes. Um, but most people right now call them mobile homes. That is like the traditional word for them. So when I'm talking about mobile home, I'm talking about the ones that are already built in a factory that you see driving down the highway. I know everyone's probably seen one. That is what we consider a mobile home. Wow. And so it can be definitely... a double wide. It doesn't have to just be a single wide. Double wide. So explain the difference between a single and a double wide stuff. Okay. A single wide is more, um, the measurements can be 14 by 70, 16 by 80, things like that. It looks, think of a bus. Think of a big old Greyhound bus, maybe a little wider, but about that size, maybe a little longer. But it's that's considered a single wide mobile home. If you Got take it. two buses and put them together, that would be considered a double wide mobile home. Got it. Okay. Okay, cool. I didn't know that. So the parts made there... Do do they have different values regarding the whole the whole um, home is made in the factory? And I actually have videos of me um, visiting a factory. Maybe one day you can have me on. I can show that for everyone and show them what? how it's built from the beginning to the end. But yes, there are different levels of mobile homes. There are mobile homes right now. I say the average rate minimum is going about twenty thousand, and they can go all the way up to a hundred thousand. I mean, we're talking mobile Gosh. homes that have sunken living rooms with fireplaces, with mm. the USB ports in the wall and, you Got know, it. completely out with the Internet and Wi-Fi and everything you can imagine in them. Got it. It can be done in a mobile home. Wow, that's crazy. So the, the manufactured homes, do they have different values than the mobile homes or are they kind of the same type of value? Um, 
they're a little different because they're built on the land. They're put together on the land. So I do not believe you're going to find one for $20,000 out of the factory. Yeah. You may Got be it. able to, but they usually start in the 40s and up. Okay, cool. 40s so you, do you do both or what is your specialty? Are you more on mobile homes? Um, When you're getting into, I would say manufacturer or modular homes, um, instead of saying manufacturer because they're... Manufactured goes with mobile homes. Got it. Okay, because they're manufactured in the factory. A modular yeah. home is where they're putting up the walls, putting up the pieces, and bringing it to the land. I typically deal with modular homes because once those are put on the land, they then become real property. Mm. They don't. They're no longer personal property, which is what a mobile home is. A mobile home, yeah. manufactured home, is basically a car. It, it, it's it's the same thing as a car. You get a title, like a, a car title. You get a literal title, like the car title for your mobile home. Sweet. So you're not getting a deed. Okay. Well, that lot rent. I'm guessing, Steph, lot rent can be from A to Z, too? Yeah. I mean, I know lot rent that is 150 <laughs> Still. <sighs> there are still people that charge only 150 250 300 I mean, that, of course, is starting to go up. And I think the reason why the, the lot rent is, um, well, it was so low because most people that had mobile home parks were mom and pop owners. What we call is, you know, you individual, you had some land out there and you're like, hey, this land is sitting here, not making any money. Let me get it out and at least make some money from it. <coughs> you know? um, but yeah, they, it runs the gamut. The, um, the lot rents are starting to go up because a lot more companies, uh, REITs, and type things are coming in and buying up a lot of the mobile home parks. And when they're doing mm. that, of course, they have to increase the rent because they have more overhead. They're coming in and renovating the parks and doing a lot of different things to upgrade the look of the park. So, yeah, they pass some of that cost on to the to the residents. Interesting stuff, man. I just I just know in my gut and I see it, too. And even where we're at, stuff, I'm having to buy because I live in Hampton Roads. I'm having mm -hmm. to buy in the suburbs because rent here is 16, 17, 18, 2. Yeah. I mean, it's just, Stephen, the, the rent here has, I have empathy for people that rent. Is it going on where you're at too? Oh, yeah. They're $3,000 or more for a one bedroom. I feel like I'm in New York City. I mean, it's, wow. it's, it's yeah, it's expanding. We're not talking about in the heart of Charlotte. We're talking about outside of Charlotte. It's about $3,000. Um, I would God. say our average is about sixteen sixteen hundred a month average, versus versus whatever. what was it what versus uh, two thousand nineteen stuff what was seven hundred dollars seven fifty eight hundred dollars double yeah double you double. know yeah I know mobile homes are the future and even tiny homes for that but that's I, I know you know we're not really dealing with that today. But I'm having personally, you know, because I do single family. I got to go out mm -hmm. now. I'm going into Franklin oh, yeah. and Surrey County because. Yeah. And people pay, you know, the rents are lower and people are commuting as opposed to paying this high rent nowadays. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. I don't want to blow smoke up, you know, anybody's. But the thing is, the prices for mobile homes are going up too. use mobile. OK. Homes. There was a time when um, I still there is still a way you can get it with zero dollars. I, I lie to you not. We'll get there. Everybody want to know that. Integrity. But the thing <laughs> is, there are used mobile homes out here that are getting more expensive to buy. So if you're if you're following other um, investors and gurus on YouTube, et cetera, they are telling you you can buy mobile homes and you're starting to do some research maybe and you're like, hey, I can't buy a mobile home for $500 or I'm not finding those. It's not that they're not out there. They are out there, Gotta but run. the prices are going up because what did I just say? REITs are getting involved in mobile homes now. Mm -hmm. There's more investors getting involved in mobile homes. There's people like yourself, Chris, that were in single family houses that have a lot of experience in that area now moving into <coughs> mobile homes. So yeah, things are getting a little bit more expensive because there's a demand for them. But you still, still there is an opportunity. Remember, I love to think outside the box. I'm not going to share that on here. But you take that class, you'll get to hear some of that out of box way thinking that can get you mobile homes without a large budget. 
I love it. Let's talk about that real quick. We got 65 people on here, Stephanie. I asked you to do this for me. I'm telling y'all, I have nothing to hide. I reached out to the lady. I've been trying to get her here to do this training, man, to do this training. She did it many, many years ago. It was crazy. But she's going to be doing her two-day virtual workshop, right? It's going to be next mm-hmm. next week, next uh, Thursday, Friday. Next like, yeah, we're done doing we're doing it during daytime. So, Steph, just tell them a little bit about, do you have the link, everything, some of the stuff we're going to be covering in there to show them what you're going to be talking about and how you can serve our, our community with affordable housing? Yeah. Well, um, in the course, I'll be teaching you where you can find mobile homes. Um, what We talked about it a little bit here. What are mobile homes? What's the difference? Um We'll talk about seller financing. We'll talk about uh, property management. We'll go into the different um, types of mobile home investing. So we did talk about lot rent and you know owning the home and maybe not having to deal with running toilets and going out and fixing things. We're we're just going to talk about pretty much anything, any questions that you have. Um, I'm going to go into. Uh, what's the difference between a mobile home and a single family house as far as electric and water? Are they all on septic? No, they're not. But, you know, um, where can you find mobile home parks? Are they only all the way out in the country? No, they're not. They're some right here in the heart of Charlotte where people are really, there's one right by the the Charlotte airport. It's huge. I think it has over 300 lots and the airport keeps trying to buy it from them. So there are mobile home parks that are in really good areas or up and coming areas that if you can get the land or if you can get that park and you want to sit and wait for the appreciation, you can do it. You can do it. We're going to we're going to get into all of that taxes and titles and um, the difference between personal property and real property and how do you turn a mobile home into real property if you wanted to do that? Um, the advantages and disadvantages of investing in mobile homes and pr- everything, everything. everything. Well, I, I want to know. $500 budget. What'd you say? So a $10,000 budget. Oh, okay. Different budgets to invest. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll go into all of that. Well, how about people that just want to wholesale? I mean, can you, can you even wholesale? Where do you think I got my zero dollar from? You can invest in mobile homes with zero dollar. And I know when people think wholesale, they're thinking, well, don't I have to buy the home first before I can wholesale it? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. You don't have to actually put money down on that home to then flip it or wholesale it to someone else. You don't have to do that. I love it. So you, ah, uh, you, okay. I see here you've got a workbook that you're going to be giving my people. And how about your documents? That's what's important for me. I want the lease, yeah. the purchase agreement. You can you give them all that yeah. stuff too, stuff? Um, I can. I can give you all that stuff. Um, like I said, uh, the leases are not any different than what you use for traditional homes. Um, it just depends on what you're doing. That's one thing about mobile homes. There are so many different varieties of investing in mobile homes. There would be a different type of list, lease if you're doing lot rental only. So if mm-hmm. you have a park or you buy a park, that's a different type of lease than if you were gonna rent the home out. If you're gonna rent the home out, that's just a, a rental lease. I always yeah. recommend just using the lease for your state. So if you have a real estate board, use that lease because it has all of the language in there that can protect you, especially if you need to go to court. There's yeah. also other type of documents, like if you're going to do a rent to own, which I, I really don't call rent to own. I call it rent with the option to buy. Mm-hmm. Um, I just still stay away from that whole Dodd-Frank and everything. Yeah. Um, but you can do a rent with the option to buy. That is a, its own separate paperwork. Um, yes. And believe it or not, some of this paperwork you can get at Office Depot. Um, or those type of places, you can go get those little packages where they have the, the lease agreement with the real estate documents. Mm-hmm. You can use those. And then all you need to do is maybe update some clauses here or there based on what you're doing. Like well, I said, I started from the ground with, you know, I didn't have this. I didn't have the YouTube and the 
you know, somebody out there that can teach me how to do this. I had to learn baptism by fire. And I've gone through a lot of fire for y'all. Okay. <laughs> so y'all don't have to. <laughs> I cannot wait. So look, we're going to keep going here, but the training is in the video description below. Stephanie is going to be doing a two-day virtual workshop. I'm going to be there with her, helping her host it. And she's the expert. I'm learning this stuff too. I see the writing on the wall because I'm doing houses. You don't even want to know the prices that I'm having. I'm, I'm buying a I'm buying a daggone house, Stephanie, that's a teardown for like 110000 I mean, and it's worth almost nothing. So the value is... What's your rehab them, cost? Traditionally, a, uh, it was it used to be 30 40. Now I'm spending 60 to 70 to rehab a regular house. It's mm -hmm. crazy. I mean, every one yeah. of my deals, I got I got three hundred thousand dollars out on every single deal. And I'm like, if I could just piece a little bit that little bit of that money into something like mobile homes, I'll be interested in doing that. You yeah, know? you're talking maybe a five thousand dollar budget on a mobile home. I mean, if, if yeah. you really want to do it up, you can go up to ten thousand, but it's not necessary. I have to diversify. I'm just like, I see it, man. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's crazy when you do business for so long, you can kind of see things just like I yeah. saw when people were moving in the suburbs. I'm like, okay, I'm going to Franklin County. Boom. Mm -hmm. We just did one, a deal out there. We're getting, well, anyway, so I could see people mm -hmm. are looking for places with lower monthly payments. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And th now they, they don't mind driving because they have no option. They no, have no option. option. Yeah. Good point. Let's get some questions and stuff. So look, uh, get get registered up early. Register early. Super early bird registration is open now. It will change in a few days. You know, I love all my roundup people that come and take action. So, and the VIP tickets you're gonna get in. You're gonna we're gonna send you a link for the Facebook group to meet other people, and you're gonna get be able to ask questions. So general admission, get to attend it. You can't ask questions, but VIP you can ask questions. Both tickets you're gonna get. Uh, the workbook and all of her documents and stuff, but the VIP, you'll be able to network with other investors, ask your questions live with Steph, and get a membership to the, uh, you're going to go inside the Facebook group. So Stephanie, I just want to say thank you so much for sacrificing your time for this too. No, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry I've been gone, but I'm back now. And, um, you know, it's something I'm passionate about. So do you want to share that stuff with the family, or you is that we will keep that personal? I, I I'm not. What, I want to put you on the spot. What, what me being away? Yeah, I, my thing is, man. You know, yeah. Personal yeah, no. I, with family. I, 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 hey, look, I'm an open book. I, I really am. Uh, I'm a real person. I'm. J I just. I want to put that out there. Like, I had some uh, family um, issues, um, and I really want to share this. You know. Um, I've been trying to I've been trying to get Stephanie. I promise you. I've been on this yeah, lady. I've yeah, driven um, down there twice. Yeah. Um <laughs> just had a family member that um was dealing with um some mental health issues, schizophrenia, which is a uh, really interesting um diagnosis. And that took me away um because we we're just trying to figure out what's going on. And I honestly, since COVID, I think more and more people are dealing with a lot of mental health issues. You're daggone right. More and more. So that, that's become a passion of mine. Um, I see it with my residents. Now I have more empathy towards my residents that I'm like looking, uh, hmm, I think there's this issue or this issue there. Um, so yeah, that's just one of the reasons why I was away. Just just family, family, you know, um, obligations. And yeah. but it didn't yeah. stop me from from mobile homes and mobile home investing and doing what I was doing personally. But my main objective now is to get others to, again, be able to invest in some type of real estate because it is it's a money making opportunity. It's wealth building. And if you can do it and do it at minimal cost, it may, you know what I tell people, there's two options. You either have the money and don't have the time. Well, three options. You have the money and don't have the time. You have the money and you have the time. Or you don't have the money, but you have the time. So, no. it, it, you know, it's any of those options. You just have to figure out which one you are. Which one it's you not are. always about having money to make money. That's right. I think, and even what I, my opinion, what I've learned, Steph, is once you learn how to make money without, you should learn how to make money without money first. And then, yes. and especially with these small dollar amounts, you can you can double and triple that easily. Yes, yes, yes. 
So, yes. All right. The link's in the video, uh, right in the show notes below, y'all. Get signed up. The training is going to be next Thursday and Friday, and we'll look forward to seeing you there. Gregory, where can you buy a mobile home park? I don't know if she said a mobile home park. She says you got a mobile home for zero dollars. Did you bring okay, them up? Now, I can answer that up. question. I can answer that question. So that's kind of a trick question, Gregory. I would not say that you can buy a mobile home park for zero dollars. Yeah, but I don't know. You gotta. That's really a trick question. Um, I'll go into it more in my training. It is possible. I know you're gonna be like, what? It is possible, but it's with seller financing Got and it. it's very, very rare. It's very rare. More than likely, if you're going to buy a mobile home park, you're going to, you can buy it with, I know people that have bought a mobile home park with seller financing for $10,000, but down. that park needed a down, but that park needed a lot of work. So yeah, it's $0 maybe, or very little to buy a park. But you're still going to need the money to get that park up and running, mm -hmm. you know, repairs and things like that. So, so we can't that's why I said it's kind of a tricky question. Yeah, don't worry, Greg. Don't be putting mobile home park. I mean, come on. Even you got closing costs with that. You know, who's going to pay the closing costs? That's going to be. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Uh, Jackie, never, never knew the difference between double versus single wide homes. Me neither. Oh, great, Jackie. Great. Yeah. I like to use the bus analogy because, I mean, it's about that size, maybe a little wider, but most people know what a bus looks like. So, yeah. uh, LA Wilder, what's the process for a Section 8 voucher being used to buy a, I guess, a mobile home? I've heard of them renting but not buying. Mm -hmm. Well, um, LA, they changed the process with Section 8 where it used to be you could only use your <laughs> voucher to rent, rent homes, mobile home, um, single family home, you could only use it to rent. But now because they're promoting um, home ownership, you can now use that voucher to buy a home. You just, whoever it is would have to talk to their local section eight um, agency mm -hmm. to find out what the process is to convert that, that voucher over to actually buying the home. Got it. Got it. Uh, Mars. Marcella, hey, nice smile. Any manufacturer home that is tied down becomes real property and is tied to the land. It sounds like she knows what she's doing. Not necessarily, Marcella. I, I, I hear what you're saying, but remember, all mobile homes are strapped down. They're all strapped down. They have parking straps underneath them, but mm. they may have the vinyl skirting. When it becomes real property is when you take the, the wheels off when you affix it to the land, usually with a um, brick underpinning, so mm. it becomes affixed to the land. Got if it. it still has those wheels, it still has the axles um, that you can just get a mover to come in and put those wheels back on, put the hitch back on and can move it, then it's still considered personal property. Oh, Only man. when it gets affixed to the land does it wow. become real property. Got it. Okay. So the uh, mobile home, is you're saying it's strapped to something in the land. It's strapped down. So it looks like um I'm trying to think. Oh, has anybody ever gotten packages like a large boxes and it has those metal straps on it? Yeah. Yeah. And it has those. That's kind of what it looks like. It looks like those metal straps, of course, a lot thicker, and they look like they have buckles on them. Um, mm -hmm. and they strap them down from the front of the home, the middle of the home, and the end of the home. And those are called hurricane straps. And basically so that if wind comes through 20 miles an hour, well, 50 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour, it's not going to take that home and pull it off the land. So it's strapped down. Stephanie, I would like for you to share some of the stuff you're working on now. I know I asked you before we got on here if we could see some pictures. Y'all want to see some pictures? Put a yes in the <laughs> chat. I would, I love this stuff. The real deal. Stephanie, she took me, she took me through all type of houses when I went down there. <laughs> Go down there, hit the button. It says present. Okay. And then you're going to have to just select your screen and you probably won't see it, but we will be able to see it. Yeah, I'll try to upload some of these. Oh, so Marcella says, yes, she meant tied down, meant yeah, to a, a foundation. Yeah. Yep. That's what I thought. Marcella, we know you know what you're doing. We yeah, you she talk. this girl. I know she know what you're talking about. Right. We're going to get to some more questions here, y'all. But while she, Stephanie's pulling that up, make sure you get signed up early 
super early bird registration is open right now in the show notes below to join us in a two-day virtual training. You know how we do. We're going to bring you maximum value. There's two tickets, general admission and VIP. You can ask questions in VIP. You're going to get the recordings in VIP, and you're going to be able to join the Facebook group and network with all the people that are interested in doing the mobile home investing, including Stephanie and myself. Yeah. You see it there? I don't see it yet. Yeah, um, it's uploading. Oh, maybe too big. Right, we'll see. We'll see. We got a question over here. Uh, da, da, da. She been selling. Oh, okay, Marcella. I am. She said she's been doing it for yeah. Decades. <laughs> I can tell. Mm-hmm. For decades, I know. Oh, Marcella, not a lot of us around that's been doing it for a while because people wouldn't touch them. Yeah, including me. Gregory's not letting this go. He wants to know how. Well, how to, if you can't get a, a lot for zero dollars, how do you get a? Are you or, or one of these today? That, zero dollars. He said, if you can't get a lot, how do you get a mobile home for zero dollars? I guess he's. Are you going over a zero dollar well, one with the pictures, or is this something else? I'm gonna go over a zero dollar one. For some reason, it, it's not uploading. Let's see. Oh no! No. Turn it. Let's see. Let's see. Maybe I'll just open them on my screen and then share them from here. Let's see. If you put them on the screen, then we can just share your screen. Yeah, we'll do that. Michael, everybody wants to know zero dollars. Here's the thing. I don't focus on the zero dollar aspect because in my mind, it's taking me to a place that, you know, it's not duplicatable every day. I want to know what's duplicatable because zero dollar stuff, even anything doesn't come that, you know, it just doesn't come around all day, every day. Or does it, Stephanie? All these trick questions. Um, I'm just saying, if you're only focused on zero dollar stuff, you're going to be. Here's the thing. I wouldn't focus on zero dollar stuff. Well, I'm not going to say that. There's a way to focus on zero dollar stuff. But the zero dollar stuff that I'm talking about is what you mentioned, which was wholesaling. Yeah. So, So you know, you're going to get it for zero dollars. Doesn't mean that it doesn't cost anything. It's just that you're not going to put any money out of pocket. And then you're going to be able to flip it to those people who don't have the time. They have the money, but they don't have the time. There so, you go. yeah. So I'm not you're- doing any kind of thing tricky here, but I'm just letting you know there's ways of investing in mobile homes for zero dollars. What I've seen you, Stephanie, I've seen you acquire units for 500 bucks where the people had left and they were like, look, we don't want the unit. I've seen you do it. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I just saw one on Facebook yesterday. Zero dollars. Person was like, hey, I got a piece of land and um, um, I don't want this mobile home that's sitting on here. Um, If you want it, come get it. You just have to move it. Look at that. And it was zero dollars. There you go, Gregory. They'll give they I've seen I've I've been into units that Stephanie has people have have people have given her. But I think people give them away because they don't want the hassle of dealing with it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you live here, Steph. All right, so I'm going to show some pictures here. Um, let's see. Give It'll us a back story on this. Isn't this exciting, y'all? Give Stephanie a thumbs up, man. I've been trying to get this lady on here for two years. All right, so here we go. I have some pictures of a mobile home. No, pull it up. Let me know if you can see my screen, Chris. I see you clicking around. I see the PDF and I see the mobile home questions. All right, so uh, you're not able to see this. Hold on. You might have to go back out and yeah, I'm gonna have to go back out. Select entire. It'll ask you what what do you want to show and uh, put entire screen. Yeah, we can go back. So thanks for bearing with. Look at that. Somebody's agreeing, Marcella. Yeah, I've given them away too. She's <laughs> so she's a. Uh, there you go. She's giving them away. They're not pretty, okay. but they're free. <laughs> Let's see. I'm clicking entire screen. My seller share. just bought okay. one for four thousand dollars. Just can't find the land. Look at that. Y'all might be able All to. All right. Can you see together. my screen now? I see the I see the building. Okay. So this is a mobile home, and if you look right here in the window, it says for sale. So okay. this is a mobile home park, and if you drive through mobile home parks, you will see this occasionally where someone is selling their mobile home park. I mean, their mm-hmm. mobile home. I was able to pick this mobile home up. Um, 
for, with this one, I was able to get it for $2,000 um, because the person just needed to move and there was some damage inside. They didn't want to have to clean up or anything. So I'm going to show you some pictures of the interior of this home. Yeah. This All is right. so exciting. So stuff. here's pictures of the interior, as you can see. Um, this is, you can see that the floor is pretty damaged. You can look back here um, and you is can that see that the walls. Uh, it's this dirt, dirt and oil mold. And yeah, okay. it's a combination of a whole lot of different things. <laughs> Real quick, <laughs> Steph, right. what's the backstory? Um, what's the backstory on this lady here? What's the backstory on this person, Steph? Did um, she say? This home actually, this person actually was deceased. Um, they, okay. they passed away and the family didn't want the home. They didn't want the home, so they um, were like, hey, we just want to get rid of it. Um, give us a thousand bucks for it and you can have it, kind of Got thing. It. Um, and so I went in and I purchased the home. And as you can see, like this is the bathroom. You can see the floors are in a little rough shape. For whatever reason, it looks like they had carpet in the bathroom. Don't know why, mm. but um, mm. they had carpet in the bathroom and I guess they started pulling it up. Mm. Um, here's um, here's the one of the bedrooms. As you can see, carpet, they left the uh, air condition behind and the blinds are, are pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Um that's, it's just this, this same home. I uh, want to show you a home that I actually got. Um, I'm going to show the exterior of one of the homes. Oh, hold on. Let me go back. I'll take you. This is a home that I just got. Uh, right oh, here. I know what it is. It wasn't saved to your computer. You got it saved up in the cloud somewhere. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> this is a home that I got. Um, and I know you're looking at all the garbage outside. But here's the thing. I got this home for zero dollars. This is another home <laughs> that um, someone passed away, and I was able to get this home. And all the stuff that you're seeing outside is the new owners came in and started cleaning up the home. Mm. So they started taking all the stuff, throwing it outside, and they're going to do the dumpster and they're going to do all that stuff. The reason why I have this picture is to show you that you do not have to have a lot of money. There's a lot mm. of people that will look at a home like this. And go, there's no way I'm going to be able to buy this home, even if it was free. There's no way I'm going to be able to. I don't have the money to get a dumpster. I don't have the time to clean it out. I can't mm -hmm. pay someone to clean it out. I don't have time to do the renovation. All the stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I was able to get this home and sell it for $7,000 as is with all the junk in it. Hold up. Say that again, Steph. I was able to get this home. For zero dollars, sell it as is. You see all that junk outside, and mm -hmm. that's only part of the junk. They also have to do floors and everything else. I was able to sell that home for seven thousand dollars. Wow, that's crazy, man. Seven thousand dollars. I'm gonna stop sharing. Yeah, so, are, yeah. Just to show you that it's possible to get these types of homes. You saw all that junk. I paid zero dollars for that home. Then I was able to find someone to flip that home to and not some not an investor, not an investor, somebody that is going to live in that home. Yeah. But what they wanted was they needed a three bedroom home. Like you said, things are expensive. They can't find a house or the rent is expensive. So they were able to buy that home, pay cash. Well, actually, they were doing seller financing, so they put down a, a significant amount of money, and then they're going to make monthly payments. I'm only going to have it financed for two years, and I'm making $7,000 on that home, and I put $0 out of pocket. No cleaning costs, no anything. The only cost I have was the gas that I had to drive from my place to that place. Okay. We're going to keep going here. I'm going to, I got some more questions. We're listening to Roundup, homies. We're, we're opening it up right now. The, the link is in the show notes below. Stephanie's two-day virtual workshop was going to be next week. So get the dates and all the times if you want to join us to learn how to do this. Stephanie is a master. Been doing this since 2007. And I've personally been to her a lot. I've seen her in action. So thank you so much. Y'all go down there and check out. check it out. At least save it. Save it and super early registration will be ending soon. We'll open it up right and now. And for those of you that do come to the class, I have a a bonus. 
Hmm. that I'll be, I'm going to talk about during this training that I didn't talk about in my previous trainings or anywhere else. And you don't hear many people talking about it. Marcella probably can um, account to this is getting the titles for mobile homes. When you don't know where the title, where there's people that get these mobile homes and they're used mobile homes. They may be old or the person passed away and the family doesn't have the title. They can't find the title or maybe there never was a title because whoever bought it from before bought it on a bill of sale and never got the title. I'm going to help people. I'm actually in the process of writing a how to manual on mm. how to get the title for mobile homes when you don't have the title. OK, so when it's uh, basically it's been lost. It's been lost. So think of you having a car. You have your car and you mm -hmm. lost the title to your car. Yeah. Right. But now maybe you lost the title to the car and you have none of the information. And you want to be able to get that title. Now, with the car, it's easy. You can probably go to DMV, pull up your name and get the, the, the car title. But when it's a mobile home, most mobile homes have been sold multiple times. From one owner to another, to another, to another, to another, especially if they're older homes, 1980s, 1990s, 2000s. A lot of times these things get flipped over from one person to another for various reasons, and the title does not go along with it. I'll be able to go a little bit into how to get the titles for these mobile homes. Sweet. That's cool. Does that happen frequently, Steph? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You have a lot of mobile home park owners that have bought parks and they don't have any titles or they have very few titles for the homes that are in the park. Now they're renting them. They're doing everything they want to do with that home. But if someone comes back from the past and goes, that's my home and I want to get it back. Oh, wow. There's, there's ways to be able to prevent them from doing that. But you want to protect yourself by having that title. By that's being nasty. able to say, this is my home. Yeah, that's nasty right there. Mm -hmm. uh, Heidi says, how do you move a mobile home and where do you put it? Or if you, okay. I guess it's to my wholesaling. She says, mm -hmm. um, go ahead. Um, so that you have kind of two different questions there. So how do you move a whole mobile home? We talked about that a little bit, that it basically there are mobile home movers. It looks like uh, big tow trucks. Think of a tow truck that would tow a 18 wheeler. It kind of looks like that. And they're able to come in, lift that mobile home up, put it on wheels and take it down the road and get where you need, need to go. Of course, you need to check with your municipality. You need to get moving permits, et cetera. It's not as simple as I see a mobile home. I'm just going to pick it up and move it. You do have to go through all the permitting processes. I didn't know that. Except for Bubba that will use his dually to grab it. But, uh, you know, other than that, you know, um, or, you know, the mama that will go out and just grab grab one with their dually and take it down the road. But mm -hmm. that's how you move a mobile home. Now, as far as moving it to wholesale it, you don't need to move the home to wholesale it. You want to wholesale it to somebody that's willing to buy the home and they will move the home. Got it. You're just good finding good them the home because you have the time to do so. And hooking them up with that lead. Good, good. Wholesale, just like a, I guess, just like a house. You just get in and get yeah, out. Just, yep, get in, get out. Brian wants to know what's the most challenging aspect of managing a profitable mobile home park? Hmm. Because you got no doubt. So, I mean, I can only imagine the personalities that you got to deal with, and they're all together in the thing. I mean, they're they're all it, together. is yeah. it sometimes somebody um, doesn't like this person? I don't like that person, or this person messes with my cousin. Do you deal with that too? Yeah, you deal with that. Um, you deal with the pets, you deal with, you know, cats. Um, I don't know why cats love mobile home parks, but they do. <laughs> um, I would say the most challenging part, it, it's no different than if you were, uh, managing an apartment complex or anything yeah. like that. I mean, it's just normal, Pe everyday Pe ma management challenges. There's, it's not going to be any different because it's a mobile home park versus yeah. an apartment complex yeah. or if you own a bunch of single family houses. Mobile homes. Gregory, if you don't see the link, just refresh your screen. It's right there. In fact, I'll put that link in the chat here so you can have it as well. Sorry about that. Gregory, uh, Heidi wants to know, how do you get comps from mobile homes, Steph? Okay. Now, Heidi, that's an interesting question. 
no comps for mobile homes. There's really Ooh. not any comps for mobile homes. It's not like single family houses where you can go out and say, well, this two bedroom or three bedroom single family house with a kitchen and a garage and da 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 sold for X. So yeah. therefore this home should sell for this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really work like that with mobile homes. I know they have the NADA guide that you can get for mobile homes, the blue book like you do for cars. Those are not very accurate. Really, comps for mobile homes come from your area. You get to determine from your area, looking, talking and networking with other mobile home investors or seeing what other people are selling their homes for or renting them for to be able to determine what you're going to or rent your home for. Now you can get rent comps from mobile homes, but the actual comparables for selling your mobile home, my two bedroom versus your two bedroom, there's really not comps out there because like I said, I just got that mobile home for free. So you can't use that comp, right? <laughs> you can't you, you can't use it because it's free <laughs> you know or if i get a mobile home that needs a lot of work on it and i get it you for three thousand dollars you can't use that comp mm. so you know it, it's just a, a kind of difficult to use comps you know i'm thinking like real estate from my experience is the, the houses we do it's more of a feel like when mm -hmm. you walk into a and i i, I want to ask you Mm -hmm. Is it if you look at it, and I guess it's the value yes. on what the end user feels yes. that too. It, it's more of a feel. It's also what you're looking, believe it or not, what you're looking to make as a profit. Um, now I want to go back. Remember, we're talking mobile homes, mobile homes that can be moved. So we're not talking about homes that are uh, mobile homes or manufactured homes that are affixed to the land. Now, those you can come up with comparables on because they're mm -hmm. they are now real property. So you yeah. can come up with a value and they, you can get comps on those. But we're yeah. talking about the ones with the axles and the wheels. Um, I'm not saying that you cannot get comps, but it's not like you can go to a website and click and get comps. You have to do some work to try to figure out what the value of that mobile home is and what do you want to sell it for. But again, it goes back to that feel. It goes back to your market. You have to know your market. No, you, you have to know your market. You could come with some of that stuff too, Steph, in the training, because I don't know how to, I mean. Yeah, I, I talk about um, knowing your market and how to get to know your market and how to figure out what to rent a home for and those types of things, even some uh, management challenges as well. Cool. Okay. All right, y'all. I had Stephanie for an hour. I got to let her get out of here. So look, there's a link. Stephanie has agreed to do a two-day virtual workshop. You can join right from the comfort of your phone or your TV or whatever. Uh, it's going to be next Thursday and Friday, and we're going to do several hours starting at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard. Thank goodness Stephanie's on East Coast time, <laughs> and we're going to be covering all this stuff, how to structure your lease. I'm looking at it here. I estimate the repairs. That's a big one, Steph, estimating mm -hmm. repairs, because, I mean, it ain't estimate like a house. repairs, yeah, yeah. You're going in this stuff. Right, where I'm do you going to go into that, and we're going to talk about, you know, where you can get your supplies from mobile homes. A lot of people think you can't go to a traditional you know, um, hardware store, store, you know, yeah, like a Home Depot Ace and all these places, but you can, um, you can go to those places to get your supplies. Now, do you want to we'll talk about that in the training? Sweet, man. <laughs> Sweet. Thank you. All right. We got 60 people on still here. You guys, thank you for joining us. Steph, mobile home business. I'm presuming this has been the business that is, uh, that has, that has sustained you over time. Yes. Uh, I, would you recommend for people? Because I, 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 I'm not a big advocate of wholesaling. That's what when I talk about like no money down and all that mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, everybody. That's just such a buzzword. I'm like, mm -hmm. you just can't yeah. build. Well, I don't want to say can't. I, I wasn't able to build an empire focusing on all no money stuff, and I just don't. Want no, it. you, you can't. You're not going <sighs> to be able to build an empire or something where it's long term doing yeah. that. Now, I use that as. I, I like to have buckets, like you said, diversify. I have buckets. So there's buckets in mobile home investing. You can wholesale as well as have some rentals, as well as have some, you know, trying to buy a mobile home park, eventually getting up to that level. When we're going to talk about those different buckets, but yeah. to get in 
for those people who are trying to get into real estate. Yeah. You can you don't have the excuse of saying I don't have any money. I have zero money, so I can't do it. Good. That's what I'm trying to encourage. OK. All right. All right, guys, so get signed up. The link's right in the show notes below. If you don't see it, just refresh your screen, and we look forward to seeing you on the next training. Stephanie, thank you so much. We'll be in touch. Thank you. All right, right, Roundup. Subscribe to the channel, like, all that good stuff, and I'll see you soon. I'll see you at the training. Peace. Bye.